In this lesson, we are going to find the basis for the null space, the basis for the column space of A, the rank, and the dimension for the basis of the null space and column space of A. Okay, so just recall that the null space, the null space is basically just the solution to the homogeneous equation of AX equal to zero. Okay, so this is what we want to find. Okay, once we find that, then we can find the basis. Okay, so to do this, uh, we need to put the matrix into reduced row echelon form. Okay. Okay, so we're going to get one, negative two, zero, negative one, three. And then 0, 0, 1, 2, negative 2. And then the third row will be all zeros. Okay, and I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and augment the zero vector onto there. Okay. So uh, just recall that okay, remember that this is for x1, this is x2, x3, x4 and x5. So our pivot, okay, so we have a pivot here in the first column and a pivot in the third column, okay. So those are going to correspond to our basic variables, okay. Alright, so we have for the free variables For the free variables, those are going to be x2, x4, and x5. Okay, and then for our basic variables, okay, we have x1 and x3. Okay, all right, so then from here we can go ahead and uh, solve this okay so let's assign the free variables with some scalar values so x2 so we're going to let x2 be equal to um, let's see x2 is going to be let x2 be r and then x4 we can be equal we can let it be s and then x5, let it be equal to t. Where r, s, and t are some real values, okay? All right, so now um, we can go ahead and write x1 and x3 in terms of the free variables, okay? So that's looking at the second row. Okay, we have x3. So x3 is going to be equal to uh, 2 times x5 minus 2 times x4. And then for the for x1, we have minus 3x5. plus x4 plus 2x2. Okay, so now from here, okay, uh, we can go ahead and write out our solution. So, okay, so this, okay, so x3 Okay, so actually go ahead and replace x5 and x4 with the letters, with the uh, scalars. So x3 is going to be 2 times t minus 2s. And x1 is going to be minus 3t plus s minus 
let's see, 2x2, is that minus 3t plus s plus 2 times r? Okay. All right, so now for us, right, so for our solution vector, Okay, so we have for x1, we have minus 3t. Plus s plus 2r. For x2, we have r, that was a free variable. x3 was uh, 2t minus 2s. x4 was a free variable and x5 was a free variable. Okay, so from here we can go ahead and uh, we can write this in parametric form. So before I do that, this is actually the this is the null space of A. Okay, so for any any form of this, for any R S and T we plug in here, that will be a solution of the homogeneous system A x equal to zero. Okay, so in other words, if you take pick any R S and T, plug into here, multiply it by A, you will get the zero vector. Okay, so let's in order to determine the basis, we need to expand this. So we're going to I'll go ahead and factor out R. So that's going to leave us with two one zero zero zero, and then for, we can take out S. That'll be one. 0, minus 2, 1, and 0. And then take out t. That'll be minus 3, 0, 2, 0, and 1. Okay. So we wrote, we wrote out the null space in parametric form. Okay. All right, so this gives us, right, so this is going to, this actually gives us the basis for the null space, okay, which are, okay, the three vectors that you see there, okay. So the null space of A, they're the basis of the null space. Okay, so the basis for the null space are these three vectors. So 2, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, negative 2, one, zero, and minus 3, 0, 2, 0, 1. Okay, so that's the basis for the null space of A. Okay, so since there's three vectors in there, okay, so remember the, the, the basis, it means it spans, right, and it also, those three vectors are also linearly independent of each other. And there's three, three vectors, so that actually turns out to be, this is the dimension for the null space, okay. So it's three. Okay, three, three of them. All right. So now to find the basis of the column space. Okay. So we go back to the go back up to the top here. So remember the column space is based. It's just consistent of the span of the column vectors. Okay. But we want the basis. So we go back to the reduced Rochelle form, and look at the columns that have the pivots. Okay. So we have a pivot in column one and a pivot in column three. So we go back to the original matrix, okay? So going back to the first column and the third column. So those, okay? So those will be the basis of the column space. And that's going back to the idea of using the spanning set theorem, okay? So 
the basis for the column space of A. Okay. It's going to be, so the first column was minus three, one, two. The second, the third column was negative one, two, five. Okay, so that forms the basis of the, for the, that's the basis for the column space of A. All right, and so there's two vectors here. Okay, so that is the, uh, that's going to be the dimension. Okay. So there's two, okay, two vectors. And the rank. Okay, the rank is basically just the number of of pivots. In this case, there's two pivots. Okay, so the so the rank of A is two. Okay. So one thing to remember also is that the dimension of the null space and the dimension of the column space, those are when you add those up, those are gonna those are going to add up to give you the same number of the columns of A, okay? And this makes sense because the dimension of the null space is basically the number of uh, free variables, okay? And the dimension of the column space is the is the number of of basic variables, okay? So we had three basic variables and two. I'm sorry, two, three, 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 three free variables and two basic variables, which gives us a total of five. And that corresponds to the number of columns of eight. 